Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations in all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. This is a tough passage. This is not easy. If I told you how many times I wrote this sermon, you'd understand why I say that. Um, And perhaps as we read Jesus' words, it sounds like an unfortunate metaphor because he keeps saying it over and over again, eat my flesh, drink my blood. And when you think of the crowds that were there that day, most of whom would have been Jewish and very observant Jews, the idea of drinking blood of any kind Uh, would have been specifically forbidden by Jewish law. So they would have been like, what is he talking about? Getting their heads around that would have been extremely difficult, and so no wonder so many of them left that day. All except the 12 who, led by Peter, decided to stay with Jesus. Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. Now, the words of eternal life are easy, when you are in a situation where this guy gets up and he turns five loaves of bread and ten fishes into a meal for 15,000 people. I know the Bible tells us it's five, but what they say is 5,000 men. 5,000 men. Were the men there alone? (laughs) No. So let's add another 5,000 women. And were the women there without their families, their children? No. And by the way, Who brought the basket to Jesus? A boy. So, 15,000 people. It's easy to believe in Jesus when people are getting healed everywhere, on hillsides, in tombs, in their homes, on the street, behind him, in front of him. And people would say, let's hang out with this guy, let's stick with him, let's believe in him, because he'll keep us fed and fit and healthy kind of like the prosperity theology that a lot of people believe in these days. And we're told if we're good Christians, we'll all be incredibly rich, live very happy, uneventful, plain, clean, wonderful lives in big houses with designer clothing and fancy cars because that's what God really wants for all of us. Really? But when it comes down to the reality of what it means to actually follow Jesus, on the long stony roads, sleeping rough, loving your neighbor as yourself, turning the other cheek, praying for those who persecute you, and eating Jesus' body and drinking Jesus' blood. That's another story altogether. And again, to be honest, I find it a very difficult, either metaphor or reality, and certainly it's one which has caused a lot of division in the worlds of Christian denominations because it's so difficult to understand why Jesus would stay it until I finally understood it. And what Jesus was telling his disciples then and what he's telling us now is to follow Jesus, to consider ourselves disciples, Christians, to be is to be immersed in Jesus, not superficially, but completely in a body, blood, mind and spirit way. It's because there is no halfway. And certainly back then, think about what these people were being challenged by. The Roman Empire. Anybody that didn't believe in Rome and the emperor as the god. How many millions of Christians lost their lives? Jesus was warning them this is an all or nothing at all kind of belief and kind of following. And as harsh as that sounds today, and certainly would have sounded back then, especially where the Torah was concerned for devout Jews, Jesus knew that what being a follower was going to mean. It would mean sacrifice and it would mean challenge, but would also mean courage and strength and hope and love, even in the face of devastation and death. It was meant to give them an idea that this was not an easy journey because what Jesus was talking about was going to change the world. Life and death would never be the same again. Most particularly, death would be changed forever. And that were, those were the words of eternal life. But let me give you another metaphor. Step down from this one. Carrying Jesus' cross. How many people have heard that metaphor about carrying Jesus' cross? 
I was in Jerusalem on July the 1st, 2010, and we actually carried a smaller version of Jesus' cross through the old city. We were at the um, St. George's College, which is in Arab East Jerusalem, in the Palestinian part of Jerusalem, East Jerusalem, and we walked from there down on the Damascus Road to the gate, Damascus Gate, and we carried the cross through the entire city uh, on the Via Dolorosa as uh, had been sort of put together by one of the scholars who was with us on this course. Via Dolorosa means way of the sorrows. And it was incredibly impactful for all of us. We each had a deeper sense of Jesus' own suffering than we ever had before just carrying that cross. And each of us took a moment few blocks to carry it all alone by ourselves with nobody helping us. Thinking about what happened on that day and each stop we got to, what was, what was going on in that time. And so when we are struggling today, we th when things happen to us as individuals or as a congregation, we can actually feel the weight of that cross on our shoulders. But we also feel coming in the strength that comes to us through Jesus, that our burdens are being shared and we are not alone in our difficulties. We are carrying our burden with Jesus' help and that is not a metaphor. Tiny little story, when my mother was dying in the hospital, my father said to me, I thought this time I would feel such an absence of God that I would feel so alone. And he said, I felt held onto and and close and, and I can feel something happening to me I never expected. Carrying that cross, he was not carrying it alone. And all of us have certainly experienced that this summer when our church building burned down. Seeing it as it is today, every time I see it, it's like getting a punch in the gut. And I'm sure it's the same for everybody. It is still difficult to believe what happened. But the ashes on the ground where the pews used to be and the gaping holes in the wall and the dome that is no longer there tell me it's not my imagination, it is the truth. And there are times when I feel as if Jesus' body and blood were a part of that building and are a part of that terrible loss in the fire, not just the stained glass depictions of Jesus or the other artwork around the dome and the walls, but as if Jesus himself died in those flames. But I know that's not true because of what happened on that same day when we were together at St. Mary Magdalene's. Yes, our building, God's building, was destroyed for the most part, but the people were unharmed. Nobody was hurt. None of us died. Nobody was there. Nobody that was there got harmed. None of us, none of the first responders, the the gentleman from the demolition company told me that in itself was amazing because that was a four alarm fire. Nobody was hurt. But as we held on to each other that afternoon and cried and were numb, there was also a spirit in that place that held on to each of us as well. Jesus' body, Jesus' blood. And we were reminded of the true meaning of being a part of the body of Christ that the church is not the building, as beautiful as it was and as much as we loved and honored it, but that church, the word in Greek means community of people. We've mistranslated it as meaning the building. Community is what ecclesia means, and on June the 9th we realized that in a whole new way. We, here, those watching, we are the body and blood of Christ and we are whole because of that and when we shared the Eucharist together that afternoon the way we always do we did think about what we'd lost that day but we also had hope for what could come to us in the future resurrection hope and we share the Eucharist today as a reminder of who we are and that we follow Jesus because there is no one else we can go to who has the words of eternal life. And Jesus said to his followers just previous to this particular scene, for this is the will of my Father that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life and I will raise him up on the last day.
for a people who lived with the concept that death was the absolute end. To hear these words was revelatory, but it was the road that one had to take to get to this eternal life that was causing problems with some of Jesus' followers. And so there were many who left Jesus that day 2,000 years ago, his words being too difficult for them to understand and to accept, yet there were 12 who stayed behind, who did accept and continued to believe. We are the spiritual descendants of those 12 disciples. 2,000 years later, wherever the bread and wine are shared at Eucharist, in whatever depiction of the body and blood of Jesus a believer believes, we do so with our hearts, our minds, and our souls because we are and always will be a part of the body of Christ. Just one last little note. When one part of the body hurts, other parts hurt as well. We are part of one. I was at All Saints Sherburn on Friday, and the rector and I were chatting, and she gave me this little gift. For those of you who don't know, All Saints serves those who are not just on the margins, but some of these people have fallen off the margins of society. The homeless, addicts of various kinds, prostitutes, people with mental health issues, and so on and so on. The outcasts, as they would have been called in Jesus' day. The pastor of this parish serves these people with food, water, care, and kindness, and a whole bunch of hugs. And when they heard about our fire, it reminded them of the fire in the apartment building right behind their church in which somebody did lose their life. They were very, very upset for us, and so wrote us this giant card. And I'll leave it here, of course, so that you can all see it. People with less than nothing, less than nothing, reached out and wanted us to know they love us, they're praying for us, they're holding us in their hearts because their hearts are full of love. They are like us a part of the body of Christ. We're all together. And Jesus told the crowds again that day, for this is the will of my Father that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. These are the words we live by. These are the words for eternal life. Amen.